guys, welcome to the Four Kids in a Farm Garden. This morning, we're going through our gardens kind of in a transition period, it's starting to get hot. We are taking the garden beds and rows that have a lot of our winter vegetables. We're ripping those out and preparing them for summer vegetables and flowers. Of course, this one has to have flowers. Um, one thing that we learned at the Homesteader of America conference is that nothing should go to waste on your farm. Everything is part of the economy. If you have, it's a principle in permaculture. If you have an abundance of something or waste something, you find something to take care of that waste. Luckily, I've been collecting animals this whole time that can take care of that waste. The really, really cool thing about homesteading is if you grow too much, there's never too much. It always goes to something. Today, we're gonna to show you how we turn our extra fruits and vegetables into bacon and eggs. It's the coolest magic trick on the planet. <laughs> so this was a garden that had lettuce and brassicas in it. We've already pulled that out and we've put sweet potato slips in here. If you guys want us to show you how to grow an unlimited amount of sweet potato slips, it's super easy. Uh, it didn't take any skill at all we just have a box of potatoes in dirt that are just keeping on giving us sweet potato slips and we just pull them out plant them out here so i'm just going to start pulling out all the stuff that is either going to seed um or just not progressing These are going to seed. This row also had a bunch of lettuces and broccoli and stuff like that. We still have, ooh, hey Pat. <laughs> Patty's ready to be milked. A couple cabbages that are holding on for the summer We've actually got cabbage heads forming, which is like, we're super stoked. First time raising cabbages. We've already pulled one. It was so delicious. The freshest vegetable we've ever had. We're starting to see pests overtake the leaves. Not a problem. Once again, we just throw those to our sheep, our cows. Um, chickens love them ducks love them you know they'll eat the aphids they'll eat the cabbage worms on them all that stuff goes back into our homestead and it comes out as another food it's really really cool um, i did plant these are a bunch of indeterminate tomatoes we've got sun golds we've got yellow pears we've got green zebras and sweetheart tomatoes which are the little tiny red grape tomatoes that our kids love to eat. So we're trying to plant things that we all love to eat. Um, you know, I'm not a big tomato fan, but everybody else in this family is. We will have to start planting some determinate tomatoes. We've got some Bellarosas, Coghill's favorite. Uh, we also got some invincible tomatoes um, that are supposed to grow really, really well in hot summer heat. And so we're gonna plant those. Um, we're gonna put some up. We're going to process some of them to save them for later. And then whatever is bad gets to go to our animals. Next to the tomatoes, we planted these uh, these beans. Uh, we got some gaps here. We probably should go back and replant just so we have a continual line of beans. But these are gonna be purple string beans. These are bush beans. That's a weed. We'll take care of that. Potatoes are jamming. They're doing so well. Once again, we're total first time potato growers. I dug one of these ones, the Adirondack Blue, um, earlier in the week, tried it out. I might've been cheating, but it was so, so good. It was like deep purple. It cooks and it stays purple. We're so excited for, for a big old potato harvest. We grew these in 
cardboard boxes, um, which I still think is a little bit crazy, but you can see how well they're doing. And we may do this every single year. So we're gonna have to see what the harvest is like. I mean, they're doing phenomenal. And when I do my challenge next month for the homesteader diet, where I eat only what I raise on our property for a whole month, I feel like I'm gonna be eating a lot of potatoes. So I'm crossing my fingers for a really big harvest. That would be really, really nice. Here's another row that we've got to dig up. Uh, the onions are doing phenomenal. I think they've got a little bit longer to go. Um, they're supposed to kind of lay over, like this is supposed to brown up and if the top lays over sideways, oh, maybe like this one, like these ones here. You're seeing how they're laying over. That's a sign of them being done. So, you know, in interest of just getting this ready for the next veggies, we might just end up pulling that up and prepping this garden bed. We still only have a single blueberry plant here, but look at that. I think this is our lemonade blueberry bush. Um, that almost died because we didn't give it water. So we'll pull this out. We've got, oh, a couple little cabbages. Our cabbages heads aren't forming very well. The mistake that we made with the cabbages is we planted them too late. You know, we're supposed to plant them in October, November in zone nine uh, for like a spring harvest. And we planted them, I think in December or January. The row that Rachel's harvesting right now, it's got so much pest pressure. And I think that's just because we planted them at the wrong time. So that's just something that we're learning as we go along that we can totally mess up but nothing really is a mess up it's just a learning experience all of your mess ups have a destination whether it's a compost pile or animal food or you know a lot of times they're finding out maybe the vegetable didn't do very good like a cabbage but you could eat the cabbage leaves and it tastes fantastic you can saute it you can treat it just like you would the actual vegetable the leaves of the plant are nutritious and delicious as well so what should we put in this bed? I have some sweet corn I want to plant. I got a row of okra. I guess we can succession plant some okra here. Eggplants, tomatoes. What are some other summer veggies? Here's the shallot bed. And we've been pulling some of these just as they've, oh, that one's done. Um, once again, I pulled one of these the other day and it was phenomenal. Tops are turning brown, so these are probably ready to be pulled. I'll pull it right now. Some of the tops have been, or the bulbs have been mushy. I don't know if that's because we overwatered them or what, but um, this one's probably in that. Yeah, it's just mushy. I think some of them I'm just throwing those in the pasture over there. Um, this one. Oh yeah it's nice and it's nice and firm there so that's going to be a good one that we can leave out and if you've never had a shallot it's like a really sweet mild onion really really good uh, it's kind of a French cuisine thing but uh, we feel like we're fancy when we're having a, a shallot with our dinner Corn, 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 um, corn. <laughs> it's like on steroids or something. Um, same thing with the squash. The squash and the rest of the row is kind of, eh, it's doing its best. Uh, but whatever um, happened right here, up and down here, 
um, is just perfect for the corn. I mean, nothing's really doing bad, but this is just like, uh, you know, extra good right here. It's just zoo. kind of bizarre, but I don't know what happened. I mean, I know we had the pigs in here. Maybe there's, we had the fence line here, and this is where the spot where they pooped and peed. This is where they put their poops and peeps. I don't know, but it's pretty apparent that whatever's there is helping them out a lot. <clears throat> Okay, so this is the row that has to go the most. We had China Star Cabbage here, which we never got a harvest from because we planted those too late. They just started bolting in there. Um, once again, the leaves tasted great, um, but we planted them too late, and I think that just allowed the pests to just have at it. One observation that we've had is a lot of times if you just wait, um, right? We had tons of aphids, we put out ladybugs, and it seemed like they disappeared for a little bit. Um, you know, we we're thinking like, dude, we have to spray because the aphids are so, so bad. We didn't, and about two days later, all the ladybugs came in force. So we've been finding just ladybugs everywhere, which, you know, I think the lesson there is if you just have a little bit of patience, the aphids are creating what it would a buffet. Okay. Yeah, that's right. The, you know, and if you if you have a buffet, something's gonna come to get it. And yeah, the ladybugs are definitely having a buffet in our garden right now. Yeah, you're gonna see like pests in your garden, but if you just like let it ride out, usually it takes care of itself. Devil chicken in the garden. <laughs> um, when the garden's like this, I don't mind so much. There's not a lot that the chicken's gonna do. Yeah. But when they're just starting out, though. When we have a bunch of seedlings in here and they scratch up the seedlings, or we just planted it. A row of carrots and they just dig that up and toss it everywhere. So take a look at this is what we are oh, aphids. dealing with on every single leaf and like you look in there and like it's just created these gnarly like the they're, they're all over. So look at that whole thing will be we'll go to our pigs our pigs can eat aphids mm -hmm. <laughs> they could go to our chickens our chickens can eat aphids and then they'll eat the greens it's like a perfect meal for them yeah just so cool Hey. That's really tiny. <laughs> Baby cabbage. We got a cabbage. <laughs> I think we got another one here too. Okay. <clears throat> you see how they're just not holding on very well. Huh? Maybe. We'll eat it. We'll do something with it. Rachel knows how to make sauerkraut now. I am going to do that recipe. I want to ferment. And we've got that purple cabbage too. So. Yeah. <clears throat> okay guys, this is like volunteer corner. Okay. <laughs> this is where we fed a pumpkin and a squash and there's watermelon growing up over here there's tomatoes this is where all of our extra vegetables went to our pigs that were in our garden last year and this is why we it's for the most part we're leaving them all i i admire i admire a volunteer you know they grew under a condition um, we're not putting direct water on them, 
they sprouted at the right time, they grew at the right time, and they're actually like the best looking vegetables in our garden. They're going crazy We're right not now. forcing them to do anything. Um, there's like a variety of zucchini in there that we've never seen. It's probably like either a cross or it was a hybrid last year that we're, we're getting like a, a random variety. Um, I think there's some giant pumpkins in here because we did feed them our the giant pumpkin here last year. Um, so really exciting. Like I, I don't mind them doing their thing. We're getting some, we're letting some tomatoes grow. We have no idea what they're going to be. They might taste horrible. I think they're those Baker Creek ones because we had Baker Creeks over here. Yeah, we had a little blueberry. They're like the bumblebee ones. Bumblebee, yeah, yeah, tomatoes, which are a horrible tomato. Like, yeah, they did not taste. They were at all. so gross. So, so if that's the case, <laughs> if we start getting those, then we'll rip them out. But volunteer corner, here we are. And I mean, it, you look at all, <laughs> like, there's know, no pest crazy. pressure on them. Like it's it's crazy, you know. If the a plant grows at the right time and the right conditions, usually, I think it can get strong enough to withstand a lot of that pest pressure. Uh, let's see, just that one. There we go. There you go. No pumpkin foreman. And um, if these are giant pumpkins, these things will stretch out forever so we'll probably have to train them so we don't just get overrun with pumpkins. Should I take this one out? There's another pumpkin. What? Should I take this one out? If you want, yeah. I think we've got I think, I think we've got plenty of zucchini-ish veggies. So we got some melons right here. These ones we planted on purpose. Uh, here's a little melon that's finding its way, trying to fight its way here. And, and then we got cucumbers, melons, melons. And there's, this is just like the seed bank for giant pumpkins right here. Oh, here's another melon. We planted Alibaba watermelons in this area too, so maybe we... Maybe we're going to get some of those. Cucumbers are... Oh, hi, little bee. I think that's a bee. Um, we're trellising uh, these cucumbers. So, so far, they're doing really, really well. Every once in a while, we'll just kind of come out here and, you know, flip, flip that up the next level. This also is our first year trellising cucumbers so if you've got specific tips I don't know if it's that difficult or not so we're uh, impressed with ourselves is that the right word <laughs> that uh, anybody can garden you know the master gardeners have done it for decades and probably have made decades worth of mistakes and so just do you just do it and then you'll have some successes some failures Learn from your failures, learn from your successes, and do better next year. That's all that we're trying to do here. Growing our own food, living off the land, <laughs> and listening to our cow. Patty and Cece have been separated all night, and Patty's ready to be milked. So we gotta finish up here in the garden, and we'll go take care of that. like it. Oh, they do. <laughs> we can't feed them too much of that at one time because they'll get bloated. Yeah. But that's a little treat. See, two of them. They don't mind the aphids. They don't care. Farmer A.A. A. Ron. Oh. Using, using his muscles. Falling. No falling. Okay. Oh. Okay. Instead of trying to step over that, this is probably thirty pounds. <laughs> 
cabbage and lettuce. We learned at Homesteaders of America, you can grow specific plants in your garden that will store for a long time that you can continually feed your animals with. So pumpkins are a good option. Mango wurzel beets are delicious. I'd eat them, but they used to feed those to their animals as well. And here's our, here's meatball and hot dogs pin. And this is breakfast. And they're disappointed. <laughs> they're like, where's the oats? <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. There you go, buddy. They've been eating whey, eggs, and grain for the last few days, so a pile of salad isn't. Uh... And when we first got them, they were just strictly. There you go. There we go. Come on, buddy, make us proud. <laughs> Someone's got to eat it. You gotta do what's good. You gotta do what's good for the farm. <clears throat> and what else? What else is there? Make sure you put in the comments below things that you would like us to plant in these empty garden beds now. Um, our animals love all the extra produce. That is this, that's the cool thing about a homestead. The homestead economy is nothing goes to waste. If you make a mistake, there's always a solution. So Rachel always says about gardening. Just start, just do it. You'll learn so much, right? Yeah, M making mistakes is the best way to learn. And listen, as long as you're just starting to do it, at least you're doing something and you're gonna have some kind of success. So just plant, put those seeds in the ground, put that seedling in the ground, put some water on it. You'll be surprised how easy it is. Wow, <laughs> I didn't know it was filming. <laughs> All right, you guys. So um, Aaron went to work and we have to, we're gonna finish doing, pulling the garden. I got my buddy here with me. Where's my other buddy? So we're gonna finish pulling all of that good stuff out of here. Okay, come here, sweet girl. Hi, Lily. You playing with Lily? All right. So we gave some of it to the pigs. Ooh, some of it. Look how much. There I know. Is. We totally. We gave all of that to the pigs, huh? So good. And they're kind of munching on it. They're munching on it throughout the day. And now we're going to pick the rest for the chicken. Oh, cute. He's going to fly away. Is he going to fly away? <gasps> Come on, little ladybug. Oh, there he goes. Okay, so right now we are carrying this lettuce and cabbage to the chickens. So let's get to it. Daisy's barking at us. <laughs> Cade came here. We are walking to the chicken. With our food for the chickens. 
Passing the goat. Probably could give some to the goat. I bet you they'd love you. Okay. So we got our lettuce head. They're just observing it right now. Oh. Look at her, she's loving it. Entering the cow's domain. Yeah. And we are now here <laughs> at our hey, chicken coop. We made it. We are good. Curious of what <laughs> we're throwing over right now. Yeah, uh, way. That's okay. They will love it. Those chickens, they will love oh, it. Oh, that's a big one. <laughs> Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel. Click that notification bell so you can follow us along. It helps us to grow our channel and our homestead. We really, really appreciate you guys. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Bye, friends.